So in this video, we are going to be trying to derive the result that will allow us to find the shortest distance between two skew lines. So I'm going to be doing this completely from general uh, two lines here. And hopefully we can get out a nice looking uh, formula that we will be able to use uh, rather than going through this whole process. OK, so the whole point of this video is to derive that result. Now, in the previous video, uh, we described the process that we're going to go through. So the idea is that looking at two skew lines, uh, we're going to look at them side on. OK, so L1 and L2. And the idea will be is that if I can work out a line that is running perpendicular to these two lines, so effectively you're going to consider those two lines as planes, so as if you're looking at them side on, and I'm going to find the distance from the origin to one of the lines and then subtract the distance from the origin to the other line, and then the length of that should be what I need to find. Okay, So that's the plan. Now, the first thing I need to do is work out a vector that is perpendicular to both L1 and L2. So that means I'm going to need to find the cross product between uh, this vector, this direction vector, and this direction vector. So I'm going to say that this is D1 crossed with D2. OK, so D1 will be the direction vector for line 1, and D2 will be the direction vector for D2. OK, so this is the determinant of I, J, K with D11, D12, D13, D21, D22, D23. OK, so then for I, we're going to have D12, D23, take away um, D13, D22, I. Then take away for J. Uh, so I want to kind of reverse these to just make sure it's nice and easy for us. I'm going to have that as plus. So I'm going to reverse the process. So rather than do that one times that one, then take away those two. I'll do it the other way around. So D13, D21. Take away D11, D23. Feels a little bit strange doing it that way around. And that's the way around I need. OK, uh, then for K, so plus for K, uh, D11, D22, take away D12, D21. OK, so this is a vector that is perpendicular to both D1 and D2. So we've got a line, so line through the origin... OK, so I want a line going through the origin uh, is going to be R is equal to some multiple of that, that, that. So I'm going to write this as D12, D23, take away D13, D22, lots of K. Then D13, D21, take away D11, D23 times k, and then d11, d22, that's a 2, uh, take away d12, d21, lots of k. So this is my line going through the origin. OK, so now I'm going to convert my two lines into planes. OK, so plane 1 instead of line 1. Because this is a vector that is perpendicular to both, this is going to be the normal vector to the plane. And so it must have these as coefficients of x, y, and z. So it will have d12, uh, d23, take away d13, d22, x plus d13, d21, take away d11, d23, y, plus 
D11, D22, take away D12, D21, uh, Z. Okay. And that's going to be equal to, so remember with the formula for a uh, equation of a plane, it looks like this. So N1, X plus N2Y plus N3Z, um, then we've got plus D equals zero. Okay? And uh, D here is the same as minus A dotted with N. So this is my N, which is D1 cross D2. And A is a position vector on the plane, OK? So the position vector for line 1 is this one here, which I'll label as A1. So this is A1 dotted with the normal vector, which is D1 cross D2. So this is plane 1. Right, so I can write down a similar equation for plane 2. D12, D23, take away. D13, D22, X, plus D13, D21, take away. D11, D23, Z, or oh, sorry, Y, plus D11, D22, take away. D12, D21, Z, and that's going to be equal to A. 2 dotted with D1 cross D2. And so these are my two planes. Now I need to work out where the line intersects those planes. So the line intersects pi 1. So I would substitute each of these into x, y, and z. Okay? So what I'm going to get for plane 1 is substituting this in. You'll notice that that is precisely the same as that. So I'm going to get d12, d23, take away d13, d22, squared, times k. Plus d13, D21, take away D11, D23, oh, D23, squared K, plus D11, D22, take away D12, D21, squared K, and that's going to be equal to A1 dotted with D1 cross D2. Right, OK, so what is this? So I can factor the k out. And what would I have left? I'd have that squared plus that squared plus that squared. Now that is actually the length of this squared. Because if I worked out the length of that, it would be the square root of that squared plus that squared plus that squared. So actually... What I've got here is the length of d1 cross d2 squared times k equals a dot 1 dotted with d1 cross d2. So that means that I can rearrange this to get k. So k is equal to a1 dotted with d1 cross d2 divided by the length of d1 cross d2, oh, careful, squared. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat here because um, I don't particularly want to have to write all that out again <laughs> because I'm going to have to do exactly the same for pi 2, OK? Uh, so I'm going to have to write all that out again. Diddly, OK? Uh, the only difference is that it will be exactly the same apart from I would have A2 here instead of A1. 
So I'm going to do all of that again and say, OK, well, then K is equal to A2 dotted with D1 cross D2 over the length of D1 cross D2. OK, this is a bit of a cheat. I know, um, you know, if I was if I was writing this out formally, I wouldn't do that. I would show that step as well. But um, just be aware that that's all that's going to change. OK, so I've worked out the value of K that I would need in order for this line to intersect pi 1 and the value of K required for this line to intersect pi 2. OK? Right. So that means what I can do next is I can say if I was to substitute um, this K value into this, then that would give me the coordinates of this point here or the position vector, rather, of this point here. Let's say that that is A. Now, um, what would that be doing? Well, effectively, remember what I've got here is uh, D1 cross with D2 um, times K. That's all that is. So. All I would be doing, so this is equal to D1 cross D2 times K. That's all that is. So I would be, would be putting that into that. So I could then write down OA is equal to the direction vector for, sorry, the position vector for A would be that K value going in there. So I would have, let's write this bit first. So A1, uh, sorry, dotted with D1 crossed with D2. Yeah, that's right. Uh, over D1 cross D2 squared times by D1 cross D2. So remember, that's just a constant value. So that's uh, multiplied by D1 cross with d2, and that makes it the vector. And let's call that point b. ob is substituting this one into that one. So a2 dotted with d1 cross d2 over the length of d1 cross d2 squared times d1 cross d2. OK? So that means that if I was to find the length of OA take away OB, or OB take away OA, maybe uh, um, which way round do I want to write it? Let's just write it round this way. So I mean, you know, it doesn't matter which way round um, I write these, because I could put the origin up here if I wanted to, and maybe that, um, maybe you'd prefer that, maybe. Okay, because then you've got OA take away OB. Visually, you might make, you might think that makes more sense. It's perfectly fine to, for me to swap those around. Okay, it's just the diagram showing what's going on. So I could do OA take away OB like that, and find the length. This is what I want to find. So it's this one, take away this one. OK? Now all that is, is going to be um, A1, because we can, uh, because of the properties of the scalar product, we are allowed to write that as A1 take away A2 dotted with D1 cross D2 over the length of D1 cross D2 squared times D1 cross D2 because we know that the scalar product is distributive 
over subtraction. So we're able to do that, to bring them together like that. But what have we got here? Well, we're finding the length of this vector here as well. And the length of that will knock out one of the lengths that I've got down there. So essentially, what I've got here is the length of a1 take away a2 dotted with d1 cross d2 divided by the length of d1 cross d2. And that is the formula to find the shortest distance between two skew lines. That is how it can be derived.